One thing photographers are typically always aiming for is sharpness. And to achieve the best sharpness, you need to have the ideal settings in your camera. You need to also make sure that you're focusing on the correct subject in your shot. And typically you would like to have a prime lens which offers the best sharpness possible. However, we're not always caught up uh, with the best lenses on our camera when, when we need to shoot a photo and uh, you might be happy with the result on the camera but then you go to post-process your, your photos and you're not so happy with the result. And thankfully for those situations there are a few tricks that you can do in post to improve the look of your images. And today we'll be talking about HDR and how you can obtain better sharpness and details by post-processing your photos in HDR in Lightroom Classic. So let's go ahead and take a look at some photos that I've imported which have been shot already in different exposures to see how HDR processing takes place. So I've imported three photos which I took with multiple exposures. As you can see, the first photo is brighter than the second one, which is brighter than the third photo. Now let's take a look at how we can do some HDR editing on this photo. And as you can see, the photo isn't the sharpest um, photo you've ever seen. So three of these photos, this one is slightly underexposed. And as you can see, there's a bit of detail missing in, in each of them. However, this can be fixed, as I said, with using HDR. And to use HDR, I simply select all three photos at the bottom strip right here, right click, go to Photo Merge, and select HDR. Now, immediately Lightroom processes this photo and it will create a stack of images. And if you zoom in right here, you can see that there's already a bit of detail which, which you couldn't see before. You also have the ghosting settings here, and this is typically used when you have moving subjects in your photo. So there is a, a semi-transparent object in your photo which shows in one picture but doesn't show in the other. So right here you would select for example low, medium or high depending on how many subjects or how many objects you have moving or semi-transparent in your photo. In my case, I have just a bit of clouds which are semi-transparent, but I would like to retain all the details which uh, the, the three merged photos have provided me. So I'm going to merge the, the, uh, the photos. I'm not going to use auto settings. If you click auto settings, you will immediately see that some HDR toning is taking place. And this is actually a pretty good looking photo. However, I would like to do my own settings. So let's go ahead and merge the photos and Lightroom will take a moment to, to create your HDR photo. So once processed, your photo will show in the bottom strip right here. And if we, if we take a look at the photo which we've, we've merged into an HDR photo and the properly exposed photo, we can immediately see that there is a slight difference in, in sharpness. So if we click on the HDR merged photo, we can see that there's some sort of extra sharpness, extra depth in the detail that, that we're provided with. So in the properly exposed photo, there is not that pure definition of depth that, that we see in the HDR photo. So let's take a look at how we can edit this photo to add some more drama to the shot and even increase the details a bit further. So right away, I will go ahead and enable profile correction for the lens. Now, once I do that, some distortions are removed and you can see that vignetting is removed as well from, from the original shot. Now, let's go ahead and do some corrections to the photo itself. So I will go ahead and adjust the temperature. So the haze will literally remove a bit of haze from your shot to make um, your details show much better. Now, let's add a bit of texture. And now we can go to the detail tab. And if you click Alt on your, on your PC or Command on your Mac and move the slider around, you can see the details changing in your photo. We obviously don't want to overdo sharpening here. So I'm just going to adjust the sharpening slider to 15 right here. 
Now masking will remove sharpening from areas which you don't want um, sharpening to happen. So I'm going ahead and clicking Alt again or Command on your Mac and moving the slider in order to select only the parts I would like to sharpen. Now as you can see here, I'm going to sharpen only the mountains and the details which, which are um, in the foreground. And obviously we haven't introduced any noise in the background here, in the clouds. Now let's go ahead and increase a bit of vibrance. Increase exposure by a bit, just making sure that we're not clipping the whites, as you can see. Whites are not clipping and blacks are clipping by just a bit. And cropping the image to a better looking composition. And to me this looks like uh, the photo has been salvaged from a photo which, which wasn't that exciting in the first place. So by um, using the HDR method on the three exposures that I've provided here, I can extract much more detail and much more uh, drama in the photo itself. Now one important thing to note here is that I've used three JPEG photos instead of raw photos. So this literally shows how HDR toning will hugely increase the quality of your photo even when using JPEG photos to, to edit to edit and post-processing. So uh, usually when you're using JPEGs you're limited with the amount of uh, changes that you can do. And we can see this if we copy if we copy the developer settings that, that we used here copy all of them and paste them to the properly exposed photo and as you can see the difference with these two shots is literally day and night so let's go ahead and show the difference between and if we compare both photos obviously there's a different crop on on the two photos however if we compare the two photos we can see that there's a major difference in the amount of detail and the amount of color extracted and drama extracted in these shots. Let's go ahead and compare these poles right here and you can even see that the grain on the pole is really defined in the right side photo while on the left side photo it's quite muted. And that's how you can process HDR photos in Lightroom Classic. You can go ahead and do different edits to gain the proper look and the look that you, you're desiring. However, this is a really good option to keep in mind when you're not completely satisfied with the shots that you took out of the camera. I hope you liked the tip uh, I provided in this video with regards to HDR editing in Lightroom Classic. And please make sure to like and subscribe for similar ideas to improve your photography further. Thank you for watching.